I'm so glad you asked this because very often we find patients coming into the fever clinic with just the CT report and no RT-PCR even. Uh, for various reasons, um, for very many different reasons, uh, not always a scientific or medical, because the CT scan doesn't flag off the uh, index case to the system as somebody who's COVID positive. So it might just have to do with convenience as well. Um, but certainly that's uh, not very helpful because um, the number one diagnostic test world over still remains the COVID RT-PCR. And uh, yes, sometimes we do find they are RT-PCR negative and yet they have done a CT and you might still find some changes on the CT, uh, which would suggest they have what we can only label as viral pneumonitis. So if it's a good center that reports it, you would find that they would not commit to a microbiological diagnosis, they would merely state what they see. So in that itself, you should be able to, uh, you know, any patient should be able to realize if it's a good radiological center, uh, they would term it as viral pneumonitis. Uh, for any infection, so the RT-PCR is a way to determine if there is the viral uh, load or vi virus alive in the area that they have swabbed, which means two things, A, there is an infection and B, that they can transmit it from the nose or the pharynx. So it answers two important questions for us. Does that person have an infection? Is the person able to communic communicate it to other people? So it, it's very important both for the person as well as public health. The <clears throat> Question the CT answers though is has the COVID affected the lungs? So in so that leads us to two important issues. Now the lungs would only be affected if the virus was severe enough or the load was enough to cause something to affect. And there's always a lead time. Every infection doesn't always show up the very next day with a with something on the picture. So taking a CT too soon may um, delude you or may give you a false sense of, sense of security that your lungs are not affected. And yet four or five days later, which is usually when what we call as the radiological blossoming of the lesions or the spots would occur. So rather than uh, doing your RT-PCR, you went and did a CT and the CT looks fine and you're lulled into a false sense of security and you don't take the necessary precautions for yourself in terms of monitoring oxygen or for others in terms of masking and being cautious, you've really not helped anybody, neither yourself nor the public at large. So it's not the wise thing to go ahead and do a CT. I suppose what would make sense is if your RT-PCR is repeatedly negative, person keeps showing up as with low oxygen, and you really feel that this is probably for some reason being missed on the RT-PCR, it would make sense to try and do a CT. Or if a person has an RT-PCR positive and the oxygen levels start dropping and you feel like the person is really not headed the right way, you'd like to assess the severity of the illness in terms of how much does he have, and therefore guide your therapy, um, you could use a CT. But by and large, just the oxygen saturations, knowing how the person looks and behaves is enough for you to commit to a diagnosis and a treatment with an RT-PCR positivity. Mm -hmm.